what is, but especially what is not, a fountain pen? What are the different types of writing instruments out in the market? How do they work? These and many other questions, as well as detailed information on writing instruments, will be deeply discussed in this episode. Coming up next. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the third chapter of the Fountain Pen Corner. My name is Santiago Solano and today I will describe the most common used modern writing instruments with emphasis, of course, in fountain pens. Nothing better to start this journey than explaining what is not a fountain pen. And to do so, I will describe and give a brief explanation on the most widely used writing elements in existence today. Let's start with the current most popular writing device, the ballpoint pen, also known as ball pen, dot pen, or biro, after its Hungarian-born, later nationalized Argentine inventor, Laszlo Biro. The concept of these instruments was introduced around 1888, but clogging and leaking issues delayed their development. It wasn't until 1938 that Biro solved these problems presenting an ideal viscosity chemical formula for the ink and a mechanical solution for the ball socket. Since then, the ballpoint pen quickly replaced the phantom pen and to this day, it has maintained its most popular position among all writing instruments, thanks not only to its ingenious ink reservoir, which avoids the hassle of carrying bottled ink, but also to the ease of its industrial manufacturing on a large scale. The ballpoint pen is a writing instrument that uses greasy ink contained in a small plastic or metallic reservoir. It dispenses the fluid through a ball at its distal end encased in a special socket designed in a way that allows the ball to roll over the writing surface. As the ball rolls, the part that is in contact with the reservoir is impregnated with ink and as it keeps rolling, it discharges the fluid over the paper. Quite clever. The second device to be described today is the roller ball point pen. This instrument works similar to the ball point pen due to the same principle of the ball rolling over the writing surface, but uses liquid or gel ink instead of the oil-based ink used in the latter. Compared to ballpoint pens, less force is required on roller ballpoint pens to dispense ink onto the paper, given the less viscous characteristics of their fluid, so the writing experience is smoother with this than with the former. It is also true that the roller ballpoint pens consume more ink than ballpoint pens due to the lower viscosity of their ink. On the other hand, water-based inks evaporate more easily than oil-based ones, so it is necessary for these types of instruments to be refilled more frequently. The third device to be described today is the pencil. The traditional wood graphite pencil has been around humans since the 16th century and it is a natural development of the charcoal sticks used at the beginning of written communication. Nowadays, the wood casing has applied a great amount of carpentry methods and, on the other hand, chemical mixtures of graphite and clay allows different hardness and textures of the writing section. The mechanical pencil, also known as clutch or propeller pencil, is a writing instrument that uses graphite refills of various widths and hardness called LEDs, which can be mechanically extended as the writing exercise wears down the distal tip of this LED. It differs from the traditional wood pencil in that the core is not attached to the housing of the instrument. It is important to clarify that the use of the word LED has nothing to do with this element in the periodic table. The misconception that the core of mechanical or traditional pencils is made of lead 
is very common in people's mind, which is clearly a mistake. The fourth device to be described today is part of a large family called technical drawing tools. Wikipedia defines them as specialized instruments used by engineers, architects, or draftsmen to make lines of constant width for technical drawings. Rapidograph and isograph are some examples of popular trademarks of technical pens. These instruments work as follows. A single wire is inserted into a metal cylinder connected to an ink reservoir. The width of the wire determines the thickness of the drawn line. Finally, in this video, we arrived to our goal topic, phantom pens. These amazing instruments have had an incredible evolution worth to be described. We owe the basic structure of our modern alphabet to the Phoenicians around the 10th century before our Christian era. They based their language in Babylonian cuneiform, but instead of using a symbol for every syllable, they assigned a character for every sound. This proved to be revolutionary and drastically reduced the high number of symbols used to a limited number of letters needed to write any word or sound. Very clever. The Arameans also developed the Hebrew script from the Phoenician system. Arabic and Egyptian writing was also based on the Phoenician structure. And it is precisely the Egyptian culture which leads us to the predecessor of fountain pens. The Egyptian reed pen called calamus, dipped on ink and applied on leather, papyrus, parchment, and finally on paper. Later on, the Romans evolved from the calamus reed pen to the quill. This instrument accompanied scribes and copies for many centuries, but their tips wore out very quickly and had to be constantly trimmed and then replaced with new ones. The market for feathers grew exponentially, putting some species of birds at risk, especially the goose. Such was the demand of these instruments in the 19th century that Germany required 50 million quills per year and the Bank of England alone consumed 1.5 million quills annually. Quills remained the basis of writing for many centuries, despite the described difficulty of sharpening their tips and the inconvenience of repeatedly dipping them in ink after writing a few words. It was not until 1827 that Romanian Petracci Poenaru revolutionized the market with the invention of a reservoir that could hold enough ink to write several pages. A year earlier, in 1826, Poenaru attended the Polytechnic School of Paris as a student. He was so busy taking notes and copying courses that the problems of frequent ink dipping and cutting of the tips drove him crazy to such a point that he invented a fountain pen that used a swan's squeal as an ink reservoir, taking advantage of the voluminous central channel of large feathers of these particular birds. On May 25, 1827, the manufacturing department of the French Ministry of the Interior registered Poinaru's invention with the code number 3208 and the description never-ending portable pen, which charges itself with ink. During this period, inventors used their creativity on various research fronts. On the one hand, the feathers of the birds were exchanged for metallic materials that did not require frequent trimming. This solved the inconveniences of loss of time and the need for qualified hands that this action required. Steel, silver, and gold were used in the setting and the artists developed great creativity decorating these objects. On the other hand, materials such as cork were used to prevent ink leaks when the instrument was not in use. The discovery of rubber and later plastic increased the evolutionary panorama of these instruments. The 19th century was full of inventors such as Schiffer, Cross, Parker, and Waterman, whose ideas contributed effectively
to the development of these instruments. Over time, major European, American and Asian brands have developed sophisticated filling, storing and sealing in mechanisms. This is how Pelican, Mont Blanc, Sailor, Aurora, Faber-Castell, among many others, have oriented the fountain pen market towards a varied niche for all tastes. The use of precious metals such as gold, silver, palladium, among others, has allowed the manufacture of nibs and fountain pen with high quality standards. On the other hand, the great creativity of artists inspired by elements of nature such as wood, cellulose, volcanic stones and many others have allowed the creation of instruments of great beauty and quality that not only serve to write but also allow them to be admired as true jewels.